In order to live your best life despite having multiple sclerosis, I absolutely need you to exercise as part of your lifestyle. Now, it's very easy for me to sit on my duff and tell you to go exercise. It's hard to get out there and hoof it. My name's Aaron Boster. I'm an MS neurologist here in sunny Columbus, Ohio. And in this video series, I'm helping you demystify exercise in the setting of MS. If you've missed the previous videos, no fret, I'll throw a card right up here so you can check that out later. This video will be focusing exclusively on assistance devices that can help you be more successful in your efforts at exercising. Don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Hey! So for starters, what the hey hey is an assist device? Well, I'm wearing one right now my glasses. My vision is god awful and if I use this assistance device I can see beautifully. When we are attempting to exercise in the setting of MS, sometimes an assist device can help us overcome a barrier or a challenge. There are a host of very useful assist devices when judiciously utilized in the gym or in the playing field or on the road can really make the difference between a risk of a fall and a successful workout. So grab a pen and paper and let's jump in. The first topic to tackle is heat sensitivity and motor fatigue. Unfortunately, it's all too common in the setting of multiple sclerosis that when someone begins to exercise and they raise their core body temperature even just one degree, it can cause old areas of neurological damage to literally short circuit and they can develop a weak leg or a numb leg or they can lose vision, God forbid. And this can really put a cramp in your exercise plans. Fortunately, using cooling devices can help thwart this quite handsomely. I recommend that if you have not used a cooling vest that you consider getting one. There's a lot of different places to get cooling vests. There's all kinds of different cooling vests out there. They have some that are relatively inexpensive that you can pick up at your sporting goods store. There are cooling vests that are super lightweight, literally only a couple ounces and they're very discreet. You wear them under a t-shirt and no one can see you have them on. I even have some patients that wear the old school big bulky cooling vests when they go to the gym and everyone around the gym thinks that they're an utter badass thinking they're wearing a weighted vest. Well, it's a cooling vest. Cooling vests remove heat off your core temperature. They drop your core body temperature just enough that a lot of people can exercise significantly wearing one. Now, you don't just have to use a cooling vest. They make all kinds of cooling things. They make cooling hats, cooling kerchiefs, cooling wrist straps. And I want you to experiment with a cooling device to help you keep your core body temperature down so that you can be more successful at exercising. Obviously, there's other ways of cooling down the body. Carrying ice water and chugging ice water while you exercise is an awesome sauce way of cooling the body from the inside. Setting up a strategic fan to blow a breeze across you and help wick away the heat by convection is very useful. And let's be honest, the modern invention of air conditioning is rock star awesome, and I encourage you to make sure that you're exercising in an air conditioned environment. The second topic I like to tackle is that of foot drop and leg weakness. All too often in the setting of multiple sclerosis, the turf monster tends to grab your foot and cause you to fall over. And as you exert yourself, that may become more and more of a problem. A weak leg really makes it hard to go trekking. And so there are a multitude of assist devices that can help with that. The first one is relatively inexpensive. It's called a foot flexor. And as you can see on the screen, it's nothing more than a Velcro band that goes around your ankle with a bungee that goes down to your shoelaces and pulls your foot up. And this helps keep your toes elevated so that they don't grab the ground and cause you to tumble. I love a foot flexor, not just because it's relatively inexpensive, but because it's very lightweight and you can keep it in your gym bag or even in your pocket and then throw it on when you need it and take it back off. If we go up a step from a foot flexor, we would next consider an ankle foot orthosis or an AFO. And this is typically very lightweight metal or very lightweight plastic. It's worn inside the shoe and goes up the back of the leg. And this is a more robust device to help you with foot drop. And I have many patients that will put on an AFO when they go to the gym so that the turf monster doesn't grab their foot. We can take it a step further and we can start to experiment with medicine by Edison. Now these are electrical devices that you place on your upper leg and they're very clever. They have electrodes that stimulate the muscles in the front of your leg. And when you're walking, they time an electrical stimulation 
to pop your foot up at exactly the right moment to help recreate normal gait mechanics. I have many patients that have benefited from a Bioness or a WalkAid. Now, a couple caveats. They are rather expensive and they're not covered by insurance. And they oftentimes require a physical therapist to help you dial them in. That stated, for someone who has access to this, it can make a really big difference in their ability to ambulate and to exercise. Lastly, I wanna talk about a relatively new device, which I am absolutely in love with, called the Psionic Neuro Sleeve. Now, the Neuro Sleeve looks like a neoprene sleeve that you put over the entirety of your leg from your hip all the way down to your ankle. It's got eight electrodes on the quadricep, eight electrodes on the hamstrings, eight electrodes on the calf, and eight electrodes on the tibialis anterior in the front of your leg. And it runs off an algorithm which is programmed in your phone. This is a profoundly useful device because it can help not just with a foot drop, but also with knee weakness. The point here is if we identify that you have a weak leg or a foot drop, there are assist devices that we can use to help you be successful despite it. Before we change topics, I also want to talk about trekking poles. So bringing two trekking poles with you is a really wonderful idea when you're going on a hike. It gives you awesome balance, it helps keep you from falling, and by keeping three points on the ground, even if there's a weak leg, you're much less likely to tumble. Real quick before we go on, if you found some value in this video or this video series on exercise, do me a kind favor and give it a thumbs up. Also. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Thank you. Next, I would like to turn our attention to exercise devices that can be particularly helpful in the setting of MS. So for example, a stationary bicycle, a stationary uh, treadmill, or even a stationary rowing machine are really valuable resources. If you're able to pick up a used one and bring it home, or if you have access to one in the gym, these are wonderful tools in helping someone with MS exercise. Why? Because we remove balance. If you're on a stationary bike, or if you're seated on a stationary rowing machine, the likelihood that you tumble off is very, very low. You can strap your feet in, you can sit in a proper seat and you can get a really good workout. You can really get the heart pumping, you can get the blood flowing, you can get the muscles activated without risk of falling over. Now, as a pro tip, I recommend that you keep that treadmill literally in your living room, not in the back bedroom where all the exercise equipment is kept because you never go back there or you just hang clothes on it. I want it to be in the living room wherever it is that you hang out in the evenings. Here's the deal. When you're sitting and watching the boob tube for a couple hours before you go to bed and you look over and you see that you have that gosh darn treadmill sitting there, you can do something really cool. At the top of the hour, at a commercial, jump on the treadmill and just walk casually for five minutes then jump back off. At the bottom of the hour, at the commercial, jump on the treadmill again. If you get on it for five minutes twice an hour while watching two hours of TV, you just snuck in 20 minutes of aerobic exercise during your downtime in the evenings. It's a very, very useful tool. Similarly, a recumbent bicycle is a really great way of getting on the road, of getting out in the open, enjoying the fresh air, and biking without a risk of tumbling or falling over. And so using a recumbent bike is a very, very useful tool if your balance is not so awesome sauce. A discussion of exercise would not be complete unless we talk about the value of a cool temperature swimming pool. Simply put, water is magic in the setting of MS exercise. When you're in the water, if you get overheated, the water literally wicks the heat away from you by convection. If you are leaning to the left because you're having an off-balance day, the water literally pushes to the right and helps keep you upright. If you have a weak left leg, you weigh less in the water, and so you can do things on that weak leg that you can't do on land. Any exercise effort in the water pays dividends. And if you have access to a cool temperature pool, I would consider swimming laps, walking laps, doing water Zumba, or any other activity that may occur in that pool can be a fantastic way to exercise in the setting of MS. If you wanna up your game, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next video, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.